you really have to appreciate a good manga cover. It's the thing that draws you into a series and gives you an idea of what the story is about before anything else. They can range from minimalistic to lavishly detailed, they can be action packed or calm and serene. Of course, when in doubt, you can always just slap a cute anime girl's face on the cover and call it a day. Or you know, Hitler. Hitler's good too. At the very least, I think a certain level of consistency between the covers goes a long way. I mean, look at what's going on with Shuzo Oshimi's The Flowers of Evil, for example. I can only imagine what the thought process was when making these. They start off with simple portraits of each of the main characters. Nothing wrong with that. Then by volume 4, they realized they had run out of characters, panicked, and then said, fuck it, let's just do it again, but this time it's black, I guess. Then at volume 7, they went, oh, I guess I'll actually start trying now, and we get these five volumes. These covers are so gorgeous, with each of them just being its own piece of beautiful original artwork. I really wish they had made all of them in this style from the beginning. But luckily, Vertical decided to use this style from the very beginning when making the Omnibus release. <laughs> yeah, that was a fucking lie. Instead, they went with this picture of two high school girls in swimsuits. Thanks, Vertical. I always wanted to know what it felt like to have the bookstore cashier stare at me with a disgusted look on her face. These types of covers luckily came back when Oshimi released Happiness. And these are absolutely fantastic. Just look at them. I love it when the artist experiments with different art styles for the covers, like with the beautiful watercolors in series like Tokyo Ghoul and Fire Punch, for example. Some of the later volumes in JoJo's and Death Note look like they belong in a museum, which is why I'm really glad that when Viz released the Death Note 2 in once, they said, fuck that, just make them black! Yeah, unfortunately, it feels like omnibuses almost always get shafted when it comes to their covers, which really sucks for someone like me who enjoys manga volumes with a little meat on their bones. The Vagabond singles, for example, have some of the most consistently beautiful covers I've ever seen, and the Vis Big Editions aren't bad per se, but they kinda just took some panels from the story and colored them in, which isn't all that interesting. Most of the time, they'll include the original covers as artwork on the inside, but it's just not the same, you know? There are times, however, when I actually prefer the omnibuses, like the Full Metal Alchemist hardcovers. Beautifully detailed artwork is nice, but sometimes a simple character portrait can be just as effective. Also, anything is better than what the One Piece 3 in ones did. I have a name for these types of volumes, it's Firewood! Now, let's take a trip over to Japan, as I want to talk a little about some of the magazine covers there. Of course, everyone has seen your typical Shonen Jump cover with everyone's favorite protagonists hanging out doing cool poses, but that shit's boring. I want to talk about Young Jump. You know, the magazine which has serialized manga such as Tokyo Ghoul, Gantz, Kaguya-sama, Kingdom, Real, and many more. Because these mad lads, for years now, have mastered the sacred art of putting boobs in the thumbnail. Remember earlier how I said when in doubt just put a cute anime girl on the cover? Well, Young Jump said fuck that, why would anyone reading our magazine care about anime? So they just started putting real women on the cover. You know what, let's do an experiment. One of these images is a Young Jump cover, and the other is a cover of a Playboy magazine. Could you tell? Now, eagle-eyed viewers who weren't, um, distracted, may have noticed that if you squint your eyes, you may be able to tell that there is actually some manga in the corner here, marking this as the Young Jump magazine. These, on the other hand, are just Playboy magazines. You can tell because the manga is actually the center of attention. This cover of Japanese Playboy was actually drawn by Act Age artist Shiro Usasaki. The more you know. And now, let's take a moment to appreciate the spine art. While the front of the cover is definitely more eye-catching, chances are that manga is going to be sitting on a shelf, in which case the spine is really what you're going to be looking at most of the time. Now, the spine doesn't really need to be all that flashy. Just slap a logo on there, maybe add some color variation, and you're pretty much good to go. You wouldn't think this would be too hard, right? 
So why does Kaguya-san look like this? It's like someone forced a blind person to solve a jigsaw puzzle. I'm afraid having this in my room will give someone an epileptic attack. This is kind of the result of having front cover art that extends into the spine art. It looks cool when you hold each book by itself, but together they should come with a seizure warning. There are multiple cases of this, like yeah monster, it's really cool that each cover comes together to make one picture, but don't you think you have your priorities a little mixed up there? Of course it can be done right. Pluto has some of my favorite spine art ever, having each character's right eye be placed in the middle of the spine. It does kind of give off the feeling of someone constantly glaring at me, but the bookstore experience might have awakened something in me because I don't really mind. Luckily, publishers seem to have realized that consistency is key, most of them just opting for the safe title plus volume number. But there are some standouts as well. This bigs always look great in my opinion, with their continuous art of the characters. Others have done similar things of course, with for example Goodnight Pun Pun and the newer versions of 20th Century Boys going for subtler versions of that. And sometimes you just see that simple is best, as one of my favorite lines of spine art comes from Mobile Suit Gundam, The Origin. The cover art is great here as well, but just goddamn look at these! They are so beautiful, they almost make me want to give a shit about Gundam. <laughs> that was just a joke, you guys. Nothing will ever make me give a shit about Gundam. Now, the last thing I'm about to show you might be a little hard for some of you to watch, as I'm about to show off one of the most horrible crimes to ever happen to manga. Viewer discretion is advised. Okay, so imagine this. You've just received a brand new box of manga in the mail, and then... <coughs> what the fuck is he talking about? Give me your gun. What's going on over there? Put the, put the gun I'll down. I'll show you with the box. What was in the box? Give me the What's gun. in the fucking box? Give me the gun. He just told you. You lie! You're a fucking liar! Shut up! Huh? God! Oh, God! Oh! Yes, the inconsistent logo. Any collector's worst enemy. You know, anytime someone tells me I'm bad with commitment, I just tell them how this has changed the logo like five times in the past three years. Then they just look at me funny and ask why I'm crying. Also, out of all the horrible things that happen in Berserk, I think none of it has ever made me recoil in terror as much as this image did. You laughed at me. 